filming this way after everything you're about to see, but I did want to talk before you see the rest of the video. So hi, where's my coffee? Hold, hold on, I'll be right back. I'll be right back. So I just got back from work. If you're new here, hi, my name is Shawnee. I'm an actor and a content creator and a barista. This video is going to be a few moments, a few days in my life. Guys, the situation is I've been pursuing acting in Los Angeles for quite a few years now. A thing that happens when you pursue acting in general is it can kind of consume your life. Pursuing an acting career takes a lot of work, a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of different types of investments. It's a roller coaster of emotions because there's like always rejection happening. You always have to be training and working on your craft. You're always auditioning, you're always submitting, you're always like networking, reaching out to people, staying in touch with people. What I'm trying to say is a lot of actors, including myself for most of my time in LA, because I was in this constant pursuit of acting success, I just didn't put as much importance on some other things like quality time with friends or time doing nothing and just time doing hobbies and fun things that aren't going to help my career at all. For example, learning a new skill or a new craft, not because I want to put it on my resume, but just because I want to learn it and just because it's fun for me. So it's kind of easy as an actor to like neglect other areas that aren't going to like help push your career forward because pursuing an acting career is such like an all-consuming constant thing where you're like oh my god but i have to make it and i want to make it and i've just been realizing that it's also important to put time into just doing things that aren't going to help move my career forward at all because those things are also valuable in their own way it's valuable for me to do things that are fun just because they're fun there's value in doing things outside of just like being productive or like chasing your career and so that's kind of like the theme of this video once again i am filming this intro in the future and a lot has happened since I filmed the clips you're going to see. My union, SAG-AFTRA, has gone on strike as of today. Over the past couple months, the writers' union in Hollywood has been on strike. So there have been a lot of changes, a lot of slowing down in the industry, a lot of things being shaken up in the industry, a lot of things just like on hold. And of course, as of today, because SAG is on strike, the TV and streaming negotiations were not able to be completed so as actors in the union we're not allowed to audition we're not allowed to go to premieres even go to like promotional things like comic-con we're not allowed to be on set so hollywood is pretty much like 95 percent at a halt right now i'm gonna let you in on a little secret my videos are usually released a month plus after they're created. So like I have multiple videos filmed that the world won't see until like a couple months after they they were filmed. So I think you gotta, you gotta get my gist. So the point in this video wasn't me slowing down because the industry stopped like it is currently stopped in real time when you're seeing this. The point in me slowing down and prioritizing and valuing like slower moments and like moments outside of Hollywood was just like because it's good for my mental health and like just my life and whatever. It had nothing to do with the industry shopping. It just so happens that when you're seeing this video, the industry is also stopping right now. So I, this, I you know what? It's just the timing. It's just the timing. Let me take a breath. You're about to time travel back in time with me. Are you ready? I hope so. Okay, roll the clip. I'm headed to my drop-in pottery class. I have to leave right now. There's a Dodgers game happening, so there's extra traffic getting to Echo Park, which is where I'm going. Um, but yeah, my Uber is here right now. bonnet 
the hoodie that I slept in. Still kind of waking up, just made some coffee. I'm getting ready to do a phone consultation with a therapist um, that I've been emailing back and forth with. This is the last step to see if we're gonna be a good fit for each other um, for me to start therapy with her. I'm really nervous about this call for different reasons. I kind of struggle with social anxiety and for the most part I've overcome my social anxiety but like I've mentioned this before and phone calls specifically just make me feel kind of anxious. It's just that thing, that one thing. And then when it's like an important phone call like this and like I don't really know what to expect. I think I'm also nervous because I just want this to work out. The journey towards even getting to the point of connecting with a therapist who is a woman, a woman of color, which were like two of my goals. And then my third goal was to find somebody who is either in the LGBTQ plus community or specifically has mentioned like that they're an ally, which she checks all those boxes. To even find someone like her who is also covered by my insurance, which is another goal. Um, she checks all those boxes. So this is kind of like the last step. And when I tell you guys, it's been like so frustrating and so hard and so long of a process to even get to the point where I found someone that was covered by my insurance, let alone check the other boxes. It's just been a really long process. There have been some tears involved. There's been a lot of frustration. Kind of crazy that I've reached this point finally. And so I think I'm putting a lot of pressure on this because I want it to work out. But if in the end she or I feels like after this call that this is not gonna be a good fit. It is what it is, and I'll have to continue my search. Okay, an update, guys. It looks like I missed that she emailed me and said that she's been feeling under the weather the last couple of days, and that we'll need to reschedule the phone call. Um, that's kind of disappointing, and I kind of wish she'd let me know sooner since I kind of plan certain aspects of my day around this, but I understand. Things happen. Also, apparently, she's letting me know that how therapy would work with her is it would only be over the phone and, like, not video. It already feels like a compromise to have to do therapy over video and not in person, and to only do it over the phone and not even on video definitely doesn't sound ideal to me so i guess that's something i have to think about hi this is shawnee hello ramona i can't shake the simplest feeling beyond so it's our day off. I started the morning with my first therapy session with my new therapist. Then Owen and I had a late breakfast, early lunch at a place we love called Millie's in Silver Lake. Got an iced latte and then we brought a bunch of books to read. Owen brought her binoculars because she loves bird watching. I'm almost done with this with Gabrielle Union's first book. Love this book so much. It's like a series of essays on how the author came to realize she was bisexual. And this is fiction, it's also queer, and I haven't started it yet. So what kind of bird are you looking at right now? Some sort of heron. Adult black crowned night herons have black caps that extend from a white line above their black bills. Ooh, must consult. Um, I wasn't gonna turn on the camera today because I'm having a bad mental health day. I've been struggling with anxiety a lot lately and it's definitely gotten worse recently and it's been really challenging. Last night uh, when I tried to fall asleep, I just had a really challenging hour or a few hours of like feeling really anxious. So I woke up definitely feeling off today. My mood's been pretty low and just not having a great mental health day. I feel like over the past few years though, I've gotten better at developing like healthy coping skills for situations like this, whereas like growing up, I didn't have the healthiest coping skills. So that is one thing that I'm definitely proud of myself for. So when I first woke up this morning, I did about like 30 minutes of a guided meditation just in bed to try and like ground myself and just like do what I could to like start the day off better than like how I felt when I woke up. That helped a little bit. And then I did something I never do. I stayed in bed and I just brought my laptop and my coffee and 
my breakfast and everything into bed um actually yesterday uh my girlfriend got our bedroom tv set up and like a second apple tv set up in the bedroom yeah that is new so this morning i brought my coffee and my breakfast in there and i watched caught up on some vlogs in bed and it was nice but then i also just stayed in bed and i never do that gigs are pretty slow this week and i have a, i'm gonna have like a lot of time to like fill my own time and so the next thing i did for my mental health um was schedule a bunch of things for myself over the next few days starting with this evening tonight i'm going to a book reading i've never heard of the book until today it's just something to do where i'll just be out um around people and like doing an activity that will just get myself out of my head ideally and i think it'll be i honestly think it'll be nice i'm probably gonna make some like calming tea like some mint and chamomile tea and bring it with me and just go and try and like be present and like enjoy this reading tomorrow i'm gonna be checking out a new sound bath guided meditation breath work type of thing but yeah not a great mental health day but we are taking the steps to like cope with that basically and i'm trying to do it in healthy ways and in ways that i know how definitely want to get a lot more coping skills than i already have and that is, yeah, that's one thing I want to work on in therapy, among many other things that I am currently working on in therapy. And like starting therapy has made me realize just how much more work I have to do than I thought originally, which is so fun. <laughs> surrounded by people who are kind of geeky kind of nerdy because it's just like kind of that kind of book also the main character struggles with i think social anxiety and general anxiety and like is just like scared of a lot of things so relatable this is the synopsis 16 year old bianca tor is an avid birder undergoing a gender identity crisis and grappling with an ever-growing list of fears some like fear number six initiating conversation keep them constrained forcing them to watch birds from the telescope in their bedroom and occasionally their neighbors when their gaze wanders to one particular window across the street bianca witnesses a creepy plague masked murderer take their neighbor's life. Worse, the death is ruled a suicide, forcing Bianca to make a choice. Succumb to their long list of fears, including number three, murder, and number 55, breaking into a dead guy's apartment, or investigate what happened. Bianca enlists the help of their friend Anderson Coleman, but the two have more knowledge of anime than true crime. As Bianca and Anderson dig deeper into the murder with a little help from Bianca's crush and fellow birding aficionado, Elaine Yi, fear number 13, beautiful people, number 11, parents discovering they're a raging lesbian, <laughs> the trio uncovers a conspiracy much larger and weirder than imagined. And when the killer catches wind of the investigation, suddenly Bianca's number one fear of public speaking doesn't sound so bad compared to the threat of being silenced for good. In this absurdist, darkly comical young adult thriller, that is a deceptively deep exploration of anxiety and identity. Perhaps the real murder investigation is the friends we make along the way. Oh my god, I'm so excited 
to read this book. I think it'll just be really nice, hopefully like a nice escape kind of book. I really want to start reading more, like I miss reading more. The author was so cool. Yay! Um, it was a really nice event. It was nice to get out, nice to get out of my head. I just wanted to tell you guys that I actually had a great time and I'm really glad I forced myself to go. Um, also went by myself. There were a few moments where my social anxiety like tried to kick in a little bit. But yeah, it's all it's always nice when I challenge myself to go to things by myself without having like the crutch of another person. Yeah. My girlfriend is home now too. We're probably gonna make something quick for dinner and then like hear about each other's days and um, watch something which is like our routine when we're like staying in so yeah It's me from present day again. Welcome to the end of this video, you made it. If you're still watching, um, it means you wanna hang out with me. And so I thought I would end this video by just like kind of wrapping up the whole like me looking for a therapist thing and tell you guys how it's been going. It's been a couple months now of me with my therapist. I ended up finding a really great therapist. Doing therapy just over the phone was not gonna be the right choice for me. I'm so glad I didn't even like try and do that. Being able to look someone in the eye through video just makes so much of a difference. I like my therapist a lot. She is in the LGBTQ plus community. She actually has a wife, which is so adorable. I love that my therapist has a wife. She's in the community, so she totally understands when I talk about queer related issues or things having to do with like the queer experience or just like my relationship or whatever. So the sessions have been interesting. A lot of different things have been coming up. Like I kind of mentioned earlier in the video that I didn't even really necessarily no, I needed to work on or wanted to work on, um, which is just really great um, because I just want to be the best version of myself for me and then like I want to be the best version of myself for my partner who I love so much and just like when it comes to every relationship in my life with my family, with my friends, yeah and so I'm just, I'm really happy I'm in therapy, I want to say it's going well, um, yeah. I guess if you're still here, it means you want to hang out. I don't know, how long is this video going to be? The editing me that's like in the future like five minutes from now editing this right now is going to hate me because I'm just like adding more work for myself. And it's already been a month since I've posted a video. Like probably when this goes up and I hate that. When my girlfriend and I are going to both of our first gay wedding um two of our lady friends are getting married and i'm so excited and it's just gonna be a really fun week um that i'm taking off work it's gonna be us going to a taylor swift concert on like wednesday and then that weekend is the wedding and uh we're planning a few trips for later in the year and yeah so i i can't have this video go on too much longer but comment below say hi give this video a thumbs up if you did enjoy it don't forget to subscribe and definitely turn on notifications if you want to be notified when i upload because i don't have a regular upload schedule but i do upload and i do love my youtube fam i love you guys thanks for like thanks for watching and thanks for being here and i will see you again sort of soon i promise okay <laughs> bye well miss i guess i'll be on my way now